Hello, and welcome back to Learn JavaScript with Creative Coding. Hey, that's this ad. Cool. So what we've done is we've put an interactive ad there where you can drag this guy around. He's Dr. Abstract. <laughs> there we go, in amongst the Zim marquee. All right, well, anyway, we were down in the intro. We're on the lesson where we're building, and we're building the intro. And we built this left side of the intro first. Now mind you, we didn't do any of the animation in, so there is some animation in that we could take a look at as well. To catch up there, but we're about to go into the components here where we had the color picker, uh, letting us change the, the color of this guy over here. And the slider is changing the dial. So we're gonna build the component side today like I said, there's some animation in. Uh, tell you what, maybe we'll work on the animation all at the end, and we'll just build the parts for now. Okay, so we'll reduce this down. Pop on back to our code. If you're just joining us for the first time, you'll want to check out the earlier lessons, and certainly at least the last lesson, which was 19, where we started building this little app together. We had styled some text in the label, made a tile of these colors, set the boundary to drag, and we're, uh, we were dragging a circle in there and we had a label. Now, when we code a bunch of things like that, we might want to also, where was that? That's the very top. We might also want to say something like part one. And sometimes I will put a whole bunch of these things along there so we can easily see part one. And we'll copy that and we'll move into part two here. Watch your indenting. As we pasted that in there, it kept the indenting of our chaining, which is too bad. Even if we put a semicolon there, it does that. Uh, and we're going to look into Adam to find out if we can solve that problem. It's sort of like a fake indent, and Adam seems to think it should continue to indent there. But this is now part two. Uh, <laughs> usually it's a bit more than that. Part one drag circle uh, a little bit of a reminder there drag the circle part two make components like so <clears throat> all right now in the first part we made a container called first so we'll make a const called second for the second part equals a new container and stage width divided by 2, comma, stage height divided by 2. And we'll, we can't just add 2 this time. If we add 2, this will put the container in the top left. So here we'll pose 0, comma, 0, comma, right. And that positions our container 0 from the right, the right side of the container 0 from the right. And we can always dot outline if we want to make sure that that's in the right place. So there's our second container made. And we're going to make some components now. Let's do the slider and the dial. We'll do the dial next. Const dial is equal to a new dial. Now I added that to a constant right away because I know that the slider is going to have to control the dial and the dial will have to control the slider which means we're going to need a, a reference to it. So there we have it. We also need a reference to second because we're going to dot add to the second right there. Now this would add it to the top left corner of the second. Let's see where it puts it in sort of an awkward way. Yeah, open a browser. So the center of the dial is 0, 0. And the container is at the top left-hand corner here. Well, it's in, in the top left corner of the container is, is there. So that's 0, 0. We can use the pose, which is fine, to position this in. So instead of add 2, if we centered it on second, here's what it would look like. But we don't want to center the dial. We want to put the dial up in this corner. So anytime you want to place around the edge, Pose is probably your best uh, best route. 
So we'll pose this at, oh, I don't know, something like 20 comma 20 uh, from the top left. So that's left, top. Both of those are default, but the problem is we need to get to this second uh, container here. An option that we do have is to not include any of that and say dot add to second. So if we do that, it will add to the second container and then position it 2020. So that's up to you uh, which way you want to go there. And when we refresh, 2020 is a bit too close to the edge. How about we go 4040? There's also this thing called place, dot place, that allows you to place it exactly where you want. Do you want to see that? So we could even dot place this here. And when we refresh, um, if we look at the console, F12, it says place object to get new position. And we pick up the object, and when we drop it, it tells us the location within its container. So we could eyeball it and say, right about there, and take a look at the loc. Now this is a loc, which means it's locating the registration point. So that's saying that this is 110, and this is 103. So we are welcome to grab that loc right there, and to get rid of all of this add to position and place with a loc. But be careful, a loc on second. So loc's a little bit easier to get to the container because loc will only take two parameters to start. We may as well even those off at 110 and 110. And that gets located on second. So loc is a way to position the registration point with an X and Y. Or indeed you can position uh, or you can locate something to the same place as something else by just saying loc circle 2 and that would put the dial on circle 2. You wouldn't need any of this. Well, you would need that if you wanted to put that in the second second container. All right, good. We've got our dial. Now, <clears throat> we may come back to our dial, but for now, let's make our slider. Const slider is equal to a new slider. And we will dot pose. This is a little bit easier because we're going to pose it centered at the bottom. So we'll pose it zero, which will be from the center, and then pose something like 30 up from the bottom. And this is from the center, and this is from the bottom. And don't forget, we're adding it to the second container. This will not make, well, it will make a difference if we're, if we're using... Uh, numbers and positionings like this. Uh, but it really makes a difference too when we come to animate. We're going to animate our whole second container in. And if the slider is not in the second container, then it won't act like expected. It would probably show up right away. And we're going, why did this slider show up right away? All right, well, uh, it's not too bad. It might be a touch low. So we'll bring that up to 40. <coughs> Good enough. Now, as we change the slider, we also, or as we change the dial, did that before. As we change the dial, we also want to change the slider and vice versa. So we're going to make an event on the slider that as the slider changes, we'll set the dial to the slider's current value. And when we change the dial, we'll have an event there. When we change the dial, we'll set the slider's current value to the dial's current value. All right, let's do that. Now, traditionally, we would we would put we would say dial dot on change call this function, <coughs> and that's an arrow function, and that's what would happen when we change the dial. But we cannot, or we should not, chain the on method. The on method doesn't return the object. Therefore, if we chained this like that, with an on on there, if we chained it, dial would no longer be the dial. Dial would be the return value of the on method, uh, if that even works. I, yeah, I think that's what would happen. So we don't want to chain an on. And because on's not chainable, we made a chainable change. 
method. <clears throat> so many of the components have a change event and we can automatically capture that with the change method and we just put the arrow function in there. So we would collect the event object if we needed it, right, like that. We don't need the event object though. Well, we could use it, but it's not necessary at the moment. So the event object could give us e.target, which would tell us the dial, but since we put this in a, a constant here, in the reference, we have a reference to the dial already, it's probably easier to say uh, slider dot current value is equal to dial dot current value. That's probably easier than saying e and then using e dot target here. We could do that, but it's a little less readable. <clears throat> you would do that if you had an event on multiple dials and it was the same same function that it's running, you would, could use e.target to specifically find out which dial of many dials were used. But in this case, we've only got one, so there's no point in doing this. I'll go back to, and I, I raced through this. Uh, let me run that again. Okay, so we're changing the dial. When we change the dial, we want to update the slider's current value. So both the slider and the dial have a current value property. So we would say slider dot current value is equal to dials dot current value, <clears throat> like so. Now, both the slider and the dial, when operated, will update the stage automatically. And I think it's OK to not put a stage dot up in there, date update in there. Let's try it out. So we're changing the dial, and we should see the slider go. So if we get the dial right to the end, and the slider goes to the end, then we're good. Okay, here we go. Doop, doop, doop. Yeah, that slider went to the very end. Right, it used to be in earlier versions of Zim, the update of the stage for the dial and the slider would happen before the event was uh, dispatched. And then we realized, oh, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. We may as well dispatch the event then do the stage.update automatically, and that way you don't have to put the stage.update in here. Now there is a setting called um, optimize, all with capital letters, optimize. It's a constant, and if you set optimize equal true, then the slider and the dials don't change. Do you want to see that? It's pretty weird optimize optimize equals true <clears throat> so we won't do the stage dot update there <clears throat> sorry i had the grumblies well, let's see what happens here we refresh <laughs> it's only on a rollover so when we roll over a stage dot update happens so both of these things we can't tell what's going on it's like they're they're not operating but they actually are um, so, uh, in that case, you would need the stage.update here. What we're doing is, if you put a stage.update here, then there's no reason for the dial to update the stage. If optimize is true, it never lets the components update the stage, only you can update the stage. Uh, mind you, oh, what was it? It's on the dial that we're changing. So there you can see as we change the dial, the stage is updating. Uh, but since optimize is true and we have no event in the slider yet, the slider still appears to be broken. No slider. Anyway, that's a bit advanced. Um, just uh, another thing that Zim does to make sure that we're optimized for mobile. That actually saved a little bit of um, processing at some point in the early days of mobile. Hopefully mobiles are getting faster and faster all the time. All right, so we don't need that stage.update. Uh, by default, now we're back to the sliders and dials updating themselves, <laughs> which, which is obviously a handy thing. Imagine uh, shipping Zim with, uh, with, without that and everybody's trying to use the slider and the dial or any of these components. <laughs> They're not seeing anything update. It would be very annoying. Um, okay, so now for the slider. Do you remember what we do for the slider? Well, it's kind of the same thing, isn't it? So we'll copy all that. 
paste it in here. Note that our semicolon is at the back, at the end there. When we change the slider, we'll say we'll take this one and this one and transpose them. So I have a thing in Atom. I got a plugin that allows me to swap two selections, and I just go Control T or Alt T actually, and those two select well whatever my two selections are will switch. I got two selections by holding down the control key. So control key gets those two. I go control T or alt T, sorry, alt T, and I can swap those around. So we want to set the dial's current value to the slider's current value. And again, we don't need the stage shut update. Just take that out of there. And out of here too. Boop. Okay, let's try her out. We refresh here. And I change the slider, and look at that, the dial's changing. Note that that is the farthest that the dial will go. You can play around with the parameters of the dial to make it do all sorts of things, like keep on going around. You can make it start over when it goes around. You can make the numbers continuously go up when it goes around. Uh, you don't need those ticks, so right now we've got steps set. And if we want to use ticks, if we want to see the ticks on the slider, we would we could go directly to the use ticks um, parameter and say true. So this is using the Zim Duo technique to go to any of the parameters or as many of the parameters as we want directly. But then we have to use the parameter name and colon the value. And we refresh here. And I, I think what it is, is the slider also needs a step. It's funny. I, I don't know. Is that slider? What's the slider doing? Yeah, you see how there's no step on the slider? So I'm moving it. There is a step on the dial. So the dial defaults to having a step of one with the tick showing. The slider defaults to be a continuous slider, so no steps. So we have to say step colon one. It's colon one comma use ticks true. So now we have to specify step of one. Let me refresh here. And now our sliders as well have a step of one, making those two a little bit uh, more even, wouldn't you say? All right. <clears throat> Great. Now what about the color picker? Or the button first. Button first, well, we need a color picker. Uh, that would be const. CP for color picker is equal to a new color picker. And we could dot center this just to see what a color... Whoa, where'd we go? I could center this to see what a color picker looks like. But do you like that? Like It's like, hey, give me a new slider, center it. Give me a new dial, center it. Center it. Give me a new color picker, center it. It's almost like nothing. Uh, there we go. There we've got a color picker. Now, I don't actually want an alpha picker, and these buttons are, aren't doing anything, so uh, we're kind of out of luck there. Uh, we don't even really want to see the color picker yet, <clears throat> but uh, maybe we can put the events and stuff on it. We'll dot center it, we'll get it all ready, and then it'll come back. So we're going to center it for now, and we're going to say, well, um, there is a dot change on a color picker too, but we're going to also have to do a couple other events. So why don't we just center it for now and say cp.on and we'll do it the traditional way. So this is a traditional change event. Call this arrow function, af, enter. And then we can say, um, when we make a change, we can say, oh, we don't have the button made yet. Well, we're going to change the button's color. All right, well, forget it. And there's also an exit. At least we could do the exit. We'll, we'll do the exit in both cases. When we make a change, uh, oh, it's closed. That's right. Hitting the OK will do a close. So it looks like this, cp.close, or dot on, quote, close. Call this arrow function, arrow function. And here we can say cp.remove from and stage.update. We've made a change. We need to stage.update. 
Here we go. So at least we've got the close going now, and let's uh, try that out. We refresh here. If we hit OK, uh, oh, setting, well, whatever that was, I guess setting, clicking the color. Oh, changing, I think it's changing the color and hitting OK. Nope, hitting OK when you haven't changed the color. <laughs> That's it. OK, so if you hit OK and you haven't changed the color, it closes it. Um, if you if you uh, hit the X, it closes it. But if you change the color, look, we've changed the color and hit OK, that's a change event. And so we're waiting for the change event to happen at that time. If we hit OK again, that's a close because the change event would have changed. Anyway, you don't need to worry about that. Believe it or not, that's a fairly complex uh, arrangement, all of that color picker stuff, but I think we got it down so it works naturally. It doesn't work quite naturally because we don't have the change event going at the moment. All right, so let's get that button going. Uh, that would be a const button is equal to a new button. Oh. And we will dot center. Well, let's pose that uh, over on the left. Pose, we'll center it vertically, but move it something like 40 from the edge. Centered, so this is on the right side. 40 from the right side and centered in the top. Oh, on our second container, the container called second. Yeah, let's check out our button now. All right, color picker. Looks like we could go up from center a little. <clears throat> Agreed, maybe in a little bit too. 50 minus 10. Um, so now this is minus 10 from the center. And 50 <laughs> going. Mm, okay, whatever. Not too bad. Uh, minus 20. All right, we don't want the color picker. Well, actually, I suppose we could use the color picker now. When we got the change, we'll make the button show up. But really, we want the color picker to show up when the button comes up. But we'll do that last. Uh, we will say button dot background color, that's the property that we can set, is equal to color picker dot mm, selected color. I believe that's it. And then stage dot update. Now, as soon as we do that and we change it, we might want to at the same time cp dot remove from. So if it's up to you. You don't have to do it this way, and this is the kind of the neat thing about it. So here we have it. Now if we go pink like that and hit OK, <laughs> I think this is the wrong thing. So, oh, selected. No, almost. Selected color. There we go. It was giving me black for a selected color. All right, let's try that again, uh, sort of pink and OK. There, it turned pink, and you see how that closes? It may be, and we don't have a press to get it back up. Sorry, refresh to get it back up. It may be that you want to go pink, and as soon as you do pink here, see the pink there, and then OK. So there's different ways to do that. Oh, right, we also don't want the alpha picker to be there. So that would be directly to the alpha picker dot false. See how handy that is? So there we are telling the alpha picker. You would look up in the docs to find out about that. Now, what else are we wanting? We don't even want to center the color picker. It's getting annoying. So the color picker is just made. We still apply the events to it. We've got our button here. It's when we click on the button. Or indeed, so we could create an on event. Or indeed, we can use a, a dot tap. So tap is very much like the change up here. It's a chainable method that handles a click for us, basically. This is a chainable method that handles a change event. Tap is a chainable method that handles a click event, or something like a click. It's actually an improved click. It's a click that has to happen um, within a certain area. So you can't click here and then move your mouse and let go, or 
can't press down here, move your mouse and mouse up. It, it's a tap, so it's supposed to be a down up. You can also specify how long that tap will last. Uh, by default, I, I think we've set it to a fairly long time, like three seconds, but you could, if you wanted, make sure that people just tap quickly and don't tap and hold. Okay, so uh, dot tap, and we're calling this arrow function in here. And when we tap, we would say color picker dot show like that stage dot update. And let's oh, not color picker dot show. Do we have a color picker dot show? Let me just check that out. I can't remember. We have a pane dot show, and maybe the color picker works the same way. Perhaps I'm being silly. Uh, it looks like show works but it doesn't update the stage. So color picker dot show stage dot update. Um, there's probably a color picker dot add to. So when we press stage dot updates now, that's great. Note that we have no alpha. We make a change to a color. The button changes color. We press again. Up it comes. We say OK. Button changes color. We go to pink. We go, oh no, stays green. We go to pink. I say yes. Yeah. Okay, let's try something a little bit different. But over here, okay, there we go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, those are the components on there. I think that's what we had for the components. Shall we go back and take a look at the intro here? There's, uh, we didn't even have the little ticks there. Oh, the word components, right? So let's get the word components up there in the right hand corner. New label, components dot pose. So anytime you want to position around the outside, use pose probably. And we can say something like 40 from the left, 40 down. Shall we try that? And this is from the right, or sorry, 40 from the right. That would be 40 down. <clears throat> and top, top is the default, so we don't need to put any top in there. Come back to here, refresh, components. Looks a little big, doesn't it? Yeah, maybe that's right, but how about 30? 20 and 20? That was really tucked in there, wasn't it? We don't have to remake it exactly. So refresh there, components tucked in there. I think we're, we're down a touch. Anyway, like I said, it doesn't, doesn't matter so much. And uh, have we got alpha on that components? Yeah, I think so, because all the labels right way up here, all the labels should be white. And how about 0.2? Let's check that out and make sure that alpha is working. Indeed it is. Drag the circle is 0.2, components is 0.2 as well. Bring that up to 0.7 maybe. I thought that components looked a little bit brighter. Uh, 0.75, yes! <laughs> There we go. We're a designer. Oh, look at me go. I'm going to just go get some coffee. Here, wait a minute. Get some coffee. Hey, you guys, come on over here. Is this alpha okay at 0.75? No, yeah, that's what I thought. Let's let's move that to a 0.8. And we'll go on break. We'll come back. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to chide you. <laughs> it's important, these things. I, I, I think I can see to the... Uh, the 0 0.05 of a percent of alpha, or 0 0.05 of alpha. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, how about that? That's pretty cool, huh? So this has been a, a learn JavaScript with creative coding. And brace yourself, because we have some loudness coming. There's a mother and daughter uh, with a wearable computer. OK. <laughs> yeah, there, it's working. It's kind of like no, it's smiling. Hi, Tabby. Good. You got it. Are you checking it out? No. So um, it, it's wearable computing, and it's an app called Hangy. So there it is. Uh, say hello to these girls. Do you remember how? Hi. Greetings. Oh, uh, oh, uh. Greetings. <laughs> Greetings. The robot has some glitches. Yeah. How's it going? So not too bad, huh? That's a happy face right there. Ah. Woohoo!
ASAP yeah. in real life and in computer. Ah, uh, sort of the beatnik happening. Yes, I like it, I like it. Hello. Yeah. Woot woot. So that is when that inventor Dan Zen fellow uh, wore Hangy, um, a Moby Dalian there out to uh, Crawl and Hamilton. You can see that whole video if you look up, I think it's Super Crawl and Hangy or something like that, Hamilton. You can see that whole video there. That was our first time trying it out in the wild and we didn't realize sometimes how much it bumped around when it's on our chest. We were taking video from a Hangy device. Uh, but yeah, hopefully you found that kind of creative. Isn't that unusual? Yeah, isn't that neat? So um, we're quite the talk of the town there. All right. Well, we'll see you next time. Come on in and join us at zimjs.com slash slack if you want to talk about any of this stuff. And in the next, uh, next video, we'll be going to that uh, squiggle with an arrow animating along. Ciao.